Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. We're still in 0.23.5 because um, it's impossible to upgrade this save to the most updated version of all the mods without breaking the save. And so, in attempting to get to Jupiter in this episode, or perhaps in the next episode depending on how long it takes, I'm actually going to be seeing Jewel still. Of course, in the most updated version of uh, of Real Solar System and everything, uh, you can actually get the Jupiter texture on on Jupiter and also the appropriate textures on the Galilean moons, I believe. So that would be nice. But for now, I'm going to settle with uh, the Jewel texture and the textures for the moons assigned to the moons of Jupiter and we'll deal with that as it so happens the phase angle for home and transfer between Earth and Jupiter is roughly the same angle as between Kerbin and Joule it's uh, depend completely on the relationship of the orbits and so right about here should do just fine and I think we could do a home and transfer like that so, let's go to the VAB and I'll talk about the rocket that we're going to use to send a flyby probe to Jupiter. And so here we are with the Magni 2. And the, the Magni launcher could have probably sent the probe over to Jupiter, but I wanted to give us some extra capability to do, uh, to do science around the moons of Jupiter. So, I decided to upgrade the Magni Launcher and there was opportunity to do so without replacing the main engines and that's how I define a launcher by uh, by the engines that it has in it. What we have upgraded however are the SRBs which are now 2.5 meters instead of 2 meters and slightly longer. Uh, the burn time is the same which means they have a lot more a lot more thrust to them and as a result I was able to extend the first stage and so the first stage will last for a full five minutes now and so will the second stage the second stage also lasts for five minutes and between the two stages we actually have enough capacity for much more than what we've got actually I probably should extend the third stage a little bit uh, but I'm not, not gonna touch it right now because it so happens that right now this has the Delta V necessary to get to Jupiter. Uh, actually it's a hundred meters per second short and the reason I wanted a hundred meters per second short is I want to do the fine tuning with uh, the onboard engine on the probe itself. So the probe has an Estes engine, one of my favorites, and so it, let's get a proper view, the girder is sort of in the way. Yes, so I want to do the final adjustment for for Jupiter with this and actually it looks like once we dump the fairings maybe this will have more than I thought it would so actually it might have extra fuel but assuming that it doesn't uh, we would finish up the burn with this engine and that's good because the, the thrust on this engine the acceleration will be way too great to make a fine adjustment and so it's better to use the Estes here um, let me just make sure, yes, MMHN204 all the way here. We've got plenty of solar panels, though so, um, I had trouble with Mars estimating how much, uh, how much solar power we would need, and it's possible that I might be underestimating it for Jupiter as well. I, I think I've got more than I even packed for Mars, but uh, we'll see. It might be sh that I should have just covered this whole thing with the extendable ones, and that would be the only way to go. I still haven't gotten the big ones yet, so I haven't unlocked those. I haven't unlocked any new technology since the lunar mission, and so I'm just going to hang on to my points until I get some more, because we didn't get too much out of the lunar mission. Anyway, so that's our probe. We've got two goo containers. No science juniors will wait on that. Uh, but we do have plenty of thermometers and uh, gravioli, etc. No seismometers, of course, because we're not landing it. And this is not coming back, so we have to transmit all the information. Uh, I think that covers it. So, 
I've uh, done the numbers specifically for Jupiter with the Magni 2. Uh, it, the probe is named Robinson after Kim Stanley Robinson, the writer of the three Mars trilogy books, and also uh, a few uh, Jupiter-related books as well. So, another sci-fi author, of course. And let me make sure my fairings are in the right stage here. Because they always end up wandering whenever you do stuff. Let's go here. I've added some extra separatrons to these boosters now that they're heavier, so that's taken care of. But there you have it. Altogether, it ups the mass of this uh, quite substantially to about a third of the mass of a Saturn V rocket instead of a quarter. So it's a big difference, but. It should be all right in terms of acceleration. And that's that. I think we should go now. We'll have to adjust to the inclination on the launch pad. So anyway, let's let's see how this works. Okay, so as usual, I've set the moon as my target in order to get the inclination approximately right. We'll be within three degrees of Jupiter's inclination as long as we line up with the moon. So I'm going for that. Have to be a little bit uh, careful about this because it's tough to make sure that it goes into this sort of time warp instead of physical time warp when you start out. But it looks like we're good. Time warping is going to be an issue in this, and of course signal delay is going to be the bigger issue. Ah, it's going to be in the dark too. I did not add lights to the payload, and that's because we really don't need the extra energy drain at any point during this mission. So, none of that. Okay. I think we're close enough. SAS on. Once uh, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement stabilizes everything. Very important that it does, of course. This is a rocket that begs for Joint Reinforcement. Okay, and it looks like we're good. I guess our, our wiggliness is within tolerable parameters. I'm going to throttle up. And yeah, so first launch of the Magni 2, uh, only a slight difference, but still. And of course, first launch to Jupiter. Let's see how it goes. Come on. There we go. All right, we have liftoff. And the rocket has cleared the tower. Quite a substantial amount of Delta V, as you can see, 21,000. The budget for it is as follows, 9,500 to get into orbit, and then 6,300 from orbit to Jupiter. Just for uh, fudge factor, we'd say 16,000 all the way to Jupiter. Then roughly 3,000 to decelerate around Jupiter. And then the rest to uh, make our way to some of Jupiter's moons, hopefully. In a pinch, we can use all the rest to decelerate around Jupiter. But uh, I, I don't uh, envision us uh, proceeding out of the Jupiter system. Would want to hit at least one other moon. So, we are not planning to do an uh, aero break around Jupiter itself. I don't have any sort of heat protection, heat shielding on the, on the probe. We could, of course, test whether 
a certain altitude is safe and we would want to do that uh, close to the end of the mission where I've gotten enough data sent back. So I'm not going to do that right away, but perhaps uh, close to the end of the mission we can do a burn to dip it into Jupiter to see what the properties of that are. We'll see. I mean, it's possible that on the way in we already get enough, uh, enough data. So I'm not going to prejudge that. Everything looking good so far. This is still probably Kerbal rated. I'm, I'm checking the acceleration just to make sure. But in theory we should not be going above 4 G's with this. I think. I think that was right. Could check under the Delta V thing, but... If we're a little bit over 4 G, that's not the worst thing in the world. That's going to be important because we could do all sorts of other missions, like station missions with this. I also envision using this for direct sample returns from the moon. So, so far we haven't actually returned samples from the moon on a single mission. We've uh, done two flights to bring a Kerbal there and back, but uh, we could uh, build a small probe and send it to the moon and also have it come back as well. Of course the main mass in that case is actually the parachutes and the heat shield. The probe parts are so sort of trivial. Though the goo container is sort of uh, awkward because it's tough to place just one and even just one is a little bit heavy. Yeah, I hadn't installed uh, procedural parts in this, I had installed it, uh, but uh, I've just realized that um, it is not properly configured for real fuels under this, or real fuels is not properly configured for it. So that's a bit of a problem. Uh, and that's, again, just because I'm using old versions. The newer versions, everything is properly suited, but Right now, the procedural parts uh, just have liquid fuel and oxidizer for the tanks, and so that's a little—that's obviously a problem. Can't just use those. I do like the way the parts can look when you use procedural parts, so I would like to use them, but not in this save apparently. I am working on a .24.2 save and installation, where I'm going to begin a new series. But uh, that'll be uh, down the road a bit. We've gotten one of the critical mods that I wanted to see ready uh, for that, which was, uh, of course, Nova Punch, just uh, recently released an update. But there are others that I'm still waiting on updates for. I still don't know about the compatibility of uh, Remote Tech just yet. But that's not the most... I mean, that's critical, but there are others that I'm also a little bit worried about. So, still waiting on all that stuff, and once it's all lined up, I, I can uh, probably figure something out there. And then we'll have a pretty good looking series with all sorts of neat parts. Okay, booster separation is good. Our heavier boosters did not cause any problems. Acceleration above 1G with this engine, but not so far above that it would be a waste so everything looking good here yeah kethane is or kethane is uh, one mod that i'm not entirely sure about the 0.24 compatibility on well 0.24 yes but 0.24.2 seems to have done something funny and at the same time there's this new uh, resource mod called carbonite and that works with uh, the same system, the same uh, resource system that is used in KSP Interstellar and Modular Colonization System, MKS. And so that seems a little bit more attractive because of the cross compatibility and all that stuff, though I still have to see how it all works together. Uh, the Modular Colonization System 
I like the parts, but it seems like it's already predetermined what I should be doing. But well, we'll see. Uh, it's it's interesting. I want to try it out, but I haven't decided whether it's something I can make a series. Uh, I can integrate into a series yet. Somebody had asked me to do a mod showcase on it, and that seems like a good idea. I've got the install ready for that. I just haven't recorded the video there yet. But Carbonite uh, seems interesting, but I haven't played around with it yet. If you guys have any thoughts about uh, whether how Carbonite might be working, that'd be nice. And uh, I think we're good for fairing separation now. Okay, fairing is off, a good distance away from the body of the craft. I think I can extend the AIES antenna that I really need. And so I've got that hockey to one, and so I've got that going for us. Pretty good trajectory so far. Now even with the mods updating, oh and that reminds me about one mod that I, I haven't seen updated and that's the realistic progression tech tree. I had been thinking about using the reaching for the stars engine pack and playing around with the realistic progression tech tree with uh, 0.24.2 but uh, since the tech tree isn't being updated just yet I wonder if I'm going to be able to do that. But uh, yeah, otherwise I'm uh, quite impressed by how quickly the mods were updated. Uh, but there is one caveat that uh, one of the reasons why the tech tree isn't updated is the whole balancing issues. Uh, because, you know, the parts need to be all balanced in terms of the economy and all the contracts. And of course you might want to have custom contracts when you've got something like the realistic progression tech tree. And so that all gets all very complicated balancing all the parts not only for their regular stats but also for the economics of it and uh, making that realistic is a totally different thing and uh, I hope uh, I hope that uh, eventually gets done but I certainly understand that that would take a while now unfortunately unlike the missions missions to the moon or to Duna we don't have a special probe part, I think, for uh, Jupiter or Jewel. Now, it might be that I just haven't unlocked the technology for that yet or can't see it, but I don't know if there is one. And at least I didn't find it accessible. So we're not going to be collecting data and doing those sorts of experiments this time. I decided to pick the least taxing probe core in terms of electric charge. That was the main consideration. A high apoapsis is not a problem, but we don't want to get it too high. We don't want to get it too low either because the burn is going to be a very long burn with the third stage carrying us to Jupiter. And we might actually have to do two burns. We might have to burn part of it on one orbit and then go around and burn the second part. But uh, it'll be easier if our orbit is relatively straight during the burn, and that means a comparatively high orbit uh, instead of the low orbits that I use for a transfer to the moon. Okay, first stage out. First stage separation. And second stage is lit. All good. Reading 4000 delta V here, which is way more than enough to get us to orbit. And acceleration is approaching 1G, though not quite there yet. So let's not try and flatten out here. Ah, uh, this does not look right. Yeah, I needed an extra stage here. At this point, I'm already going to turn on the main dish on the probe. 
So target, Kervin. Yeah, activate. Up. It doesn't look like I'm gonna get a circular orbit this time. The ap time to apoapsis is now increasing, which means I'm gonna get a bit of an eccentric orbit. Didn't quite time it out right. Of course, this is the first launch of a new configuration for this launcher, so I didn't quite get the acceleration down. But with this data, next time I'll be able to do a better job of it. It's possible, of course, to just pitch into the negative territory, a pitch below the horizon, but this that's inefficient and there's really no point. So just to have the more ex aesthetically pleasing orbit. I think I'll be able to keep it reasonably circular for our transfer. Okay, that's orbit. And that's where I stop. Okay, that is good enough. 500 delta V left over in this stage. We're probably not going to use that. So that's a that's an interesting point. I'm going to have to rework this launcher so that we don't waste that next time. Really, of course, the way you do that is to add to the payload, which is the more useful portion of the mission. Uh, no, I don't want Ike. I didn't even know Ike was around Jewel or slash Jupiter. I guess it's being used as one of the moons. Um, okay, unset target. <sighs> Come on. Ike is trolling me when I'm not even rendezvousing with the planet now? <sighs> wow. Okay, well, maybe I should uh, focus view. Oh, there we go. Set, set as target. All right. Now, the transfer. I'm expecting 6,300 meters per second based on my best sources. Actually, I just calculated it. But, uh, a bit of the other sources also confirm that. Okay, so KSP crashed. My computer crashed. And... It looks like at least it managed to uh, keep everything in order, so the persistent file is still okay, and we can continue with our mission without relaunching. So that's all good. Uh, but it still wants me to click on Ike instead of Jewel. Okay, come on. Okay, that looks good. Oh, excellent. Alright, so now, of course it's not hard to hit Jules or Jupiter, but it is a little bit more interesting to get closer. Well, my clever ploy to adjust the inclination here does not seem to have worked, but um, it's at a very minor cost, so I think we'll be all right. Let's uh, say we point at the node. This should take a while. We've got a tiny reaction wheel in the probe itself. We've got, of course, RCS, but I can wait. We've got an hour left until the maneuver node. We're actually, uh, we don't have to wait quite as long. I think I can dump this stage. It's a little bit iffy to dump it, even though we've got so much delta V in it, but. We ought to... Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I think it's a little bit confused about this whole... Th yeah, there we go. Okay. But uh, yeah, let's dump it uh, nevertheless, just so we can get a real read on how much Delta V we're going to be using. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. Okay, that wasn't what I wanted to decouple. That is. Okay, very good. And we'll activate the engine, though we won't fire it. This will make it a little bit easier to turn to the node. I guess we should get solar panels out, even though they're not going to be useful on this side of the planet. 
lots of solar panelry because of course I don't have the larger ones if I put any more on this it'll look like a porcupine looks like we'll have about 500 meters per second left on this stage too definitely need a heavier payload next time maybe you should bring the science junior as well add some more fuel to the probe so that it can do more once it reaches its destination I think I've gone a little bit too far actually I don't know how long this burn is going to be but I'm expecting it to be quite long uh, let's see stable very stable okay let's go thirty four minutes um, <laughs> I hope that's not right no it's not right uh, it's nineteen minutes at most but um, yeah so I think we're gonna have to go around again six minutes this time and then six minutes well probably less than I mean probably more than six minutes the next time around so we'll do three minutes on this side of the maneuver node and then three minutes past it orbit around again and then do, do the rest of the burn oh getting words out today is not the best thing uh, so anyway, I'll uh, catch you on the other side of all this. Um, yeah. Okay, so our orbit is now deviating uh, too far away from the intended orbit. So I think it's about time to just decide to go around instead of uh, continuing this burn about uh, three minutes past the maneuver node so we did about three minutes before and three minutes after not much delta V but that's because of course our acceleration is steadily increasing and so the latter half of the burn is actually going to take care of a lot more of the delta V than the first half but alright so I'm gonna shut it off here and we're going to bring the whole thing around I did mount a little camera on this I haven't been using hull cam very much but if I don't know ah there it is so if you can see here unfortunately this panel is sort of in the way but uh, we could temporarily switch to Oh no, it won't let me while I'm time warping. Well, that's a good point. I don't have it on any sort of rotational device, so that's a downside. There we go. So we have this onboard camera for when we enter the, the Joule slash Jupiter system. We can get a probe's eye view of things. It'd be more interesting if we had the uh, Jupiter texture involved. Oh, I, sh I have to tell the maneuver node to hang out for one more circuit. Okay, we're about to reach escape velocity here. And so we see the orbital period ticking up. Reminds me at some point I need to try and put something into a one-year orbit around Earth. In which case it would be the equivalent of a sort of a Lagrangian point there. But, uh, or even longer orbits, I mean, we could try. But definitely a one-year orbit would be intriguing. If we could set something in a one-year orbit... Whoop, whoop, whoop. Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Where would it need to be? Somewhere here. A one year orbit right there would be basically in uh, Sun Earth Lagrangian. I don't know if it'd work or not. Have to be a circular orbit, of course. 
I don't know if this orbital period is really accurate when it comes to such a such orbits like that. I assume so, but it's tough to say. Right now, we are going to start deviating away from our intended orbit. As you can see, we're crossing like that. So we've got this sort of angle gap, but there's no opportunity to go around a third, uh, well, a second time and try it again on a third burn because, of course, we're already escaping out here. So we're going to have to continue the burn perhaps a little bit askew, but we've got the extra 500 meters per second at delta V to fix it, so it shouldn't be a problem. So I'll talk to you again once we've uh, gotten to the end of this burn. Okay, so here we go, last bit of the burn. I originally intended to do this with the Estes engine, but I guess we'll try and get as close as possible here. Bound to be a bit quick here. I'm not seeing a periapsis. Okay, there it is. Okay. That's going up. Alright, so. We have this sort of an orbit. That's fine. I guess we could try and... Let's see what kind of fine adjustment we can make, though I don't think this is the right engine for it. But let's say we add a maneuver here and see how much closer we can get to Jupiter. While the burn was going on, I looked up uh, possibilities of aero capture around Jupiter and basically the internet consensus, especially on an article, not an article, uh, forum post in the orbiter forums was that you 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 can't do it because the radiation is too high so so there's no there's no answer there's no good answer for aero braking around Jupiter and therefore it's probably not a good thing to try it here but I might need to plan for that in a pinch but we're not going to get uh, close enough to that point like this. Oh, this is too finicky. Okay, we're getting lined up. It's a little bit early, but actually this part of the orbit is straight, so it shouldn't make a difference in theory. So let's see what the Elish rockets can do. And now. Ah, pretty close. Let's see what our resulting periapsis is. Yeah, pretty close. Okay. So after this, we'll plan to do a maneuver in 321 days. Ah, we could do quite a lot of missions in the time we have remaining before we get to that point. And so we'll get rid of our inclination. Ooh, that's... How does that orbit work out? Very interesting orbit. Oh! What goes on here? Well, that's certainly a close periapsis. 59,000 kilometers is close. 58... 53... I think we can get uh, to 1,000 kilometers without actually being in any difficulty, though I don't know exactly where the atmosphere is set in a real solar system for Jewel. Oh, now we're crashing, are we? Oh, yeah. Okay, so it's going to be a pretty minor burn at... Uh, on our mid-course plane change. 54 meters per second, let's call it. And we can now dump the 
the Jupiter transit stage, which is the third stage. Let's try and get a fair view of it here, even though we're in the dark. Okay, off it goes. Ooh, that gave us quite a kick. Well, uh, it's uh, Smart ASS doesn't... Oh, it's because of the maneuver node is here. We got a new maneuver node. I actually don't want it to go to the maneuver node. Um, I do want to keep targeting Jewel, though. Jewel slash Jupiter. Um, what do I want to do while it's still spinning around here? Well, let's just uh, SAS it. What I want to do is point it at the sun once we get uh, sight of it. And I want to do that before we have too much of a signal delay. And then we can make sure that we have the electric charge we need. So, let's just... Okay, there's the sun. Now, where are you? Right, I, I guess we can point our tail end to it. Not that. Oh, I seem to be going the wrong way. Okay, don't do that. Actually, let's make sure our RCS ports work. Yes, they do. Good. Let's use those. I know it's hard to see it right now, but uh, we'll get there. Okay, SAS on. And now there it is. Okay, stabilized right there. Good, good. And we have 3,000, we have a total of 5,480. This is actually the let's get into orbit around jewel stage and then the rest of this is the actual probe so there's the, uh, the retro burn stage for Jupiter orbit Jovian orbit I don't know if this is the best orientation but we'll go with it for now I don't know if it's gonna, if it's gonna be enough uh, electric charge honestly Okay, this is probably going to be a multiple episode thing, but I'm going to con complete the mission here. Since it is the weekend, I have the time. So let us continue. Actually, uh, let me uh, quickly jump out to Windows and uh, s uh, zip up the save file so that if something goes wrong here, I will be able to take care of it. So hold on a sec. Okay, save file preserved. So let's see if we can get the Robinson probe all the way over to Jewel slash Jupiter. All right, so time warping now. We'll keep our electric charge situation up and we're not gonna time warp too fast. Signal delay means that I'll have to take a lot of time to fix things if something goes wrong. We've got the antenna tuned to Kerbin slash Earth. So that part is done. Okay, here we are. We are in uh, solar orbit. Gonna pour on one extra level of time warping and hope that doesn't break things. Okay. Gonna slow down time warp for a sec. Uh, the physics can sometimes be iffy and are. We've also got some drain here as we start getting past the orbit of Duna that is worrying me here. I might not have done enough. Oh, you know what I could do? I th we can turn off the shorter range antenna now. Okay. 
I don't think there's anything else I can turn off that actually draws electric charge. This this doesn't. Hmm. <sighs> what can I do? Let me just check uh, that we've done goo out. No, oh, I can't, because connection. Sure, we've probably done these already, but just in case. I think those are the only ones that would work out here. If if that's possible at all. I don't know about the thermometer or the gravioli. Okay, yeah, we've done that. Probably done the rest on also. Okay. Done. Okay. Alright, so. I don't think our panels are pointed in an optimal direction. Where is the sun? Okay, well, let's get a little farther. Let's see if we when we really start getting into trouble with the electricity. Okay, I think we're getting a bit close here. Uh-oh. We're basically pointing directly at the sun and we're not getting enough. I was afraid of that. Technically pointing our tail towards the sun would be better. Let's do that. And that's because the main dish wouldn't be in the way in that case. So it looks like uh, going porcupine with the solar panels is the only way to go if we want to get something to Jupiter. That's a bit annoying. Perhaps we can still eke out some science out of this so that we can unlock bigger solar panels. We're, I don't think we're anywhere near to unlocking RTGs. So it now says we've got 31 days worth of, and well, well, no, now it's better. I guess it need just needed to turn a little bit. How's its orientation? Huh, this is tough. Okay, well, it's if it uh, recovers its orientation, it's a little bit better. Okay, I'm not feeling it here. This requires 0.2 charge. I wonder what is taking up the other 0.02, but it hardly matters. By the time we get to to this maneuver node, we'll be out of juice no matter what we do. So once again, badly underestimated the 
the amount of electric charge generation we were going to need. But we did learn that we can catapult about uh, 5.4 tons to Ju uh, Jupiter with the Magni-2 launcher. We can probably do more than that, really, given how much Delta V we had left over in the second and third stages. But, yeah, I think this, this little puppy is dead in the water here. I don't think there's any point observing Mystery Goo. And I can't because there's no connection. I guess we'll just follow this to its final fate. On the bright side, we, we also managed to have connection out here. So we know that our satellite network, despite a lot of time warping by the way, is still okay. At least up to this point. Yeah, yeah. How much... Uh, I want to see how much uh, energy generation we get once we're at Joule. That'll be an important thing. Okay, so here we are, and it looks like we need about, what, six times what we actually plan for? Oh boy, six times, maybe eight times for safety's sake, so I don't even know if we have enough surface area on this thing to have that much, that much going on. It's pointed directly at the sun right now. Uh, granted, the dish is a little bit... A little bit in the way, but not by much. I have no idea how we're going to get enough solar panels on this thing in order to keep it charged. Right. Well, next time I think we should aim at the moon and try and do more science with some more lunar science, because this probably requires some more technology to figure out. We need to research some more stuff to make this possible. Alright, I'm trying to look for Jewel slash Jupiter, but I don't see it. I'm still a ways away. Let's get closer. Anyway, so that's the verdict on the first Robinson probe. We'll have, uh, we'll have more. Wow, it's a long time. Seventy. You you get into the sphere of influence more than seventy days from periapsis. That's an, that's impressive. Well, there goes two, three years almost. Actually, more than three years because we initially time warped to our the right phase angle. Okay, so we should be able to see Jules somewhere here, right? We are sweeping high over it. There it is. Okay. It's got the cloud layer on it too, so that's there's a little bit of fighting over there. But anyway. Alright, so... I'm a little bit bummed out at this. Once again, electric charge issues. And having the margin be eight times, maybe six to eight times what we need, that's a little bit harsh. So yeah, thank you for watching my little attempt to get to Jupiter. We did reach, but we didn't succeed in doing any science. But yes, uh, we learned quite a few things. I think we can bring back home some key information to ensure that our next attempt will be more successful. So yes, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.